Hello and welcome to our next reflection on the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Uh, yesterday we talked about the prologue of that great document. Today we move on to the next section that begins by reminding us that this great desire for God has been written in every human heart and that God never ceases to call us to himself. As we begin our journey of faith, it's a beautiful image to have of God's great continuous love. That love that has brought us into life, into existence, uh, that same love that keeps us in being, uh, that keeps us alive, uh, and that same love that never gives up on us. Uh, despite our sin, despite our turning away, uh, despite all our shortcomings, whatever they may be, uh, the image of God's love that makes God call us back and that never ceases to do it. Uh, it's an image of God who never gives up on us. Long time after many of us might have given up on people around us, or maybe some of us have given up on ourselves and the hope of change or transformation. Uh, that's not who God is. God's love calls him. Uh, God's love makes him reach out to us so that we may attain happiness and peace. Uh, the Catechism reminds us that our desire for truth, for happiness, uh, can only be fulfilled in God. And so God is presented to us as the ultimate aim in this life, the reason for our being, uh, and the goal uh, to which we are tending to. We come from God and we are on a return journey to the same God. So God is reminding us, the Church is reminding us, uh, that we are created for a life of communion with God, into a deep relationship where we come to know Him, where we come to experience Him. Uh, where we come to find out things about God, uh, that we can converse, we can talk, we can listen, and God will speak to us. Uh, this is what the beginnings of that faith, uh, what the beginnings of our faith tell us. Now the Catechism also warns us that uh, we may overlook that great desire of God for us, uh, we may also not pay attention to that desire implanted in our heart for God. Uh, we may even explicitly reject it. And there are a number of reasons given to us by the Catechism. One may be a revolt against evil in the world. If God is so loving as you claim to be, if God is so loving as the Church says that he is, uh, that he wants us so intimately united with him, why there is a pandemic uh, causing so much pain and suffering and so many changes to people's lives. Why is this going on in the world? Why does a God of love permit it? For some, that's an insurmountable question. Uh, a question big enough, a problem big enough, uh, where it puts a block to that intimate relationship with the Lord. Another one might be religious ignorance or indifference. Uh, sometimes, even though we may practice our faith, we may turn up in church, uh, we might take things for granted. Uh, we might say a few prayers at home, but we might not be that interested in what does this faith actually tell me. Uh, how many of us at home have read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, which is a handbook, a summary, of our Catholic faith. Uh, isn't that a form of indifferen indifference? Uh, if I choose not to make use of the sources available to all of us to grow in my faith, to make it come alive to me, there's just one possibility. So sometimes we may become ignorant uh, of what we are actually doing, why we are doing this. Uh, what's the meaning behind everything that we do or what we actually profess to believe in? Sometimes it's the cares and riches of this world. 
we lead very busy lives. Uh, many of you will go to work. Uh, many of you will have to commute for a long time in order to reach your place of work. You'll have to do your shopping. You'll have to do your cooking. Uh, you have to bring the children to school, maybe pick them up. Uh, there's a hundred and one of things to be done during the day. Uh, and sometimes, uh, because of the values that we hold on to, because of the goals we set ourselves in life, we might have very little left time for God. The other one is the scandal of bad example on the part of believers. Uh, people fail, people sin. Uh, but sometimes people will look at us, see our sin, and be put off completely from the church or the church's faith. Sometimes by what we do, uh, we bring an obstacle into the path of other people's uh, journey of faith. Uh, sometimes there are just people hostile to religion. It's a hindrance. Uh, just like we heard in the Gospel of, of this week, Jesus' very presence was unsettling, was disturbing them. And so you will get people who are simply hostile to you without giving you time to explain what is your faith about. Uh, they just have no time for it and are totally against you. And the other part that we all struggle with is the effects of our own sin. Sin has a tendency to do what it did to Adam and Eve, and that is to make us hide from God. Now the good news is, and the beautiful image that we started off with, this reflection, is of God who isn't put off or prevented by our sin from keep calling us back to himself. And this is the greatness of God's love, a love that is greater than our sin. Because through our sin, other people might have given up on us. God doesn't do that. Because of our sin, we might have given up on ourselves. But God doesn't do that. And so he wishes us to live his love in daily life. And his life is so powerful, so different at times to what we experience in our daily relationships. That natural desire for God uh, implies that we can come to know God. God wants to be known. He wants us to come to know him. And he has created the whole world for us uh, almost like a ladder through which we can climb to the Lord. Uh, to the heavens. Uh, because the saints and the catechism remind us, well, look around you. You know, today, as I look out the window, it's beautiful, sunny. Uh, I'm fortunate enough, I'm sitting right next to a big garden. I can hear the birds singing. If you look at all that is around you, look at the sky, look at the creation, look at everything that you can see. And just think what beauty, what harmony. And isn't that a reflection of somebody who is the source of that beauty and order and peace and harmony? And the church reminds us that all of this creation speaks to us about God. It has something useful to say to us. Uh, it is a continuous revelation of God. If only we have eyes to see and maybe the time to slow down and to appreciate what is actually taking place in front of our eyes so often. And because we can use this world to reach out to God, to discover God, and the Church reminds us that we can also speak about God. I am using words, trying to uh, explain to you the mystery of our faith and the mystery of God's love. The Church is reminding us that those words that I use, uh, and no matter who it is that may be using them in a far better way than I ever will, uh, they will always fall short of the mystery of God. Uh, God can be discovered. We can speak about God. 
uh, but we cannot grasp at what God is. Uh, God is so transcendent, God is so different, so other, so simple, uh, that we will never be able to, in this life, to give justice uh, to who God is in our own limited words and vocabulary. So our thinking of God, and it's important to remember what the Catechism tells us, our knowledge of God is limited. For all of us who are tempted to imagine or think that we know it all, uh, that we have it all worked out, uh, well, this is a warning from the Church. Don't presume on that, because the truth is, uh, you are wrong. And the Lord, throughout our life, uh, will lead us through situations where he will help us to discover that we cannot grasp and work out God. And at the same time, we can say many things about him. We've got the whole scriptures that use the human words, human language, uh, to tell us about the God's great revelation. So we have a lot of things to, to remember, to remind ourselves of, but today let's keep in mind that God's great love for us has no limit. He continues to call us day after day, moment after moment. What is my response to this great love of God today? God bless you.